This is the first example of curvilinear motion and it's very similar to uh, rectilinear motion in the previous videos. Uh, the only difference is that um, that rectilinear motion is in both the x and the y directions. So that's why they call it curvilinear because you get curves. So where we should start off is um, basically just reviewing what we learned in the rectilinear problems is uh, v equals ds over dt, um, a equals dv over dt, and a is also the uh, second derivative of s over dt squared, and then basically I just want you to realize that these relationships will be utilized in both the x and y directions. So. It's kind of confusing when you just talk about it in that sense, so let's just hop right into an example. It's the best way to learn dynamics because everyone has a certain amount of intuition of how this stuff works, and then later on you almost have to let go of it because it becomes too complex. So what I'm going to have here is I'm going to have a, a little guy. He's going to be he's going to be our crazy dude, and he's going to jump off of this what seems to be a cliff and uh, don't worry that's going to be into some water and in that water let's just say we have this buoy which is going to look something like a pond in chess And basically this buoy is going to be, let's say, five feet off of the ground. And, or from the surface of the water, maybe 15 feet away from the, the cliff. And the cliff is 60 feet high. Now first off, this shoots off horizontally, so he's running off perfectly horizontally, he's not jumping off. So basically what we need to know is, um, what does, what does uh, V need to equal so that he clears that buoy? And so you got to think about your conditions. Uh, one of the big conditions that we might find is that when he gets to this buoy, so when he jumps off, when he clears, he needs to be over 15, or over 5 feet high and 15 feet out by the time he gets to where that buoy is. So first of all, how long does it take for him to go this distance right here? How long does it take to go this x distance? And then that can tell us how fast, how long he has until um, we can utilize the speed that he runs off of and how long gravity takes to bring him down to that, uh, down 55 feet essentially. So let's just work that out. What you'll have is let's just do the horizontal distance to go from, here's our equation, x2 equals x1 plus vt and that's just determined from the above equation just up here so what you find is that he needs to travel 15 feet and he's starting at zero let's just say the cliff's edge is zero and how quickly is he going to jump off and that's going to be v and then t we don't know the time either so this is going to be essentially our, our condition, that, that he made it. So I'm just going to call this our condition. It's going to be one of our equations that we're going to use. So what about the, the, the now we looked at it horizontally. This is like the horizontal, the horizontal analysis or, or the x analysis, right? And then you can do the y analysis, or the vertical analysis, so y2 equals y1. Now it would be plus vt, it would be plus vt, but we know that he's running off horizontally, so there is no initial v. 
So he's not he's not jumping up or anything. So actually, it is plus v t here, but since v is not hor uh, vertical in any way, this actually just zeroes out. And then you have plus one half a t squared. And what we can do here is we know that our y two when we get to this buoy part, so I'm just going to call this like the buoy is going to be our like minimal condition. So y2 would be 5 feet, because it's 5 feet high. The y1 is 60 feet, plus, that's 0, plus 1 half a, which is negative 32.2, that's gravity, t squared. And what you realize is that you'll have negative 55 equals one half negative 32.2 t squared, which when you work that out, you get something along the line of negative 55 over uh, negative 16.1 will equal t squared which will equal, t will go to equaling 1.848, and that's seconds. So this is how long it will take gravity to drop us 55 feet, only 1.8 seconds, so not long at all. But what's our condition? We need, we need to go... 15 are conditions up here from the horizontal analysis, right? So we just plug that into our condition. We know that we have 15 is equal to uh, essentially VT, right? So V times T, which we know gravity is going to drop us down to that height, the height of the buoy, in 1.848 seconds. So then we use that and we can determine that V will equal 8 point one one seven feet per second and that's how quickly he would need to run and I, I don't know if that's if that if he can run that fast or not but uh, just just realize that he would need to run that fast to at least at least to that fast to clear the buoy so that's why you don't want to do cliff jumping <laughs> well, anyway, let's go on to the next example. I'll see you in the next video.